and welcome to an introduction to statistics. It's good to see so many of you here. Um, when you, people ponder taking statistics for the first time, they wonder, first of all, they mispronounce it and they call it sadistics. But it's statistics. So what is statistics all about? Let me tell you how I fell in love with statistics and with numbers. Um, I took a class in general psychology and I was interested in the topic just sort of generally. I didn't do real well, I admit. I only got a B. I decided I'd give all of psychology one more chance. And I took a course in experimental psychology. And that's where I fell in love. And what the professor did, very simply, is the professor took, read us 10 words, simple words like slim, uh, sleep, tree, dog, and read these 10 words, didn't put them on the board, just read them to us, one a second, 10 seconds, and then said, write them down. And after we wrote them down, the professor said, hey, let's look at and see how many you got right. And I realized people, some people got all 10 right. And some people only got five right. And we did a mean for the class, and we realized that the mean for the class, which will represent x bar, got 8.0 right. And how much they varied, a standard deviation, was like 1.5 words right. And I realized suddenly, you can't look at somebody and decide that they have good memory or bad memory. So memory, in a way, is an abstract concept. But what we did was we were able, with numbers, to instantiate and say, hey, this is the average amount. This is perhaps what you should be able to memorize. And these people down, let's say the person down at five, they have below average memory. And we had somebody who got all 10 right, and they had way above average memory. And what I realized then was what we were able to do is we could instantiate an abstract concept, memory, with numbers. But then the professor did something even more amazing. And if we take, these are the 10 numbers, I mean the 10 words that the professor read, and this is the percentage correct. 100% is here, and this is 50%, and this is 0%. We realized that we got more of the words right in the beginning of the list and more at the end right than in the middle. Another fascinating idea came from this instantiation of memory with numbers. We had a primacy effect, we had a recency effect, and we had this blot effect in the middle of the list of words. And you could change the words around and give it to other classes. It still generates you, so it wasn't due to what was in the beginning of the list more interesting or at the end of the list. And so this, it's called a serial position effect. It was all due to numbers and to statistics because we were able to take a mean. Now, what do the statistics do? What's this purpose? The purpose of statistics is not to just make a pie chart or some graph. Statistics are going to make decisions. We're going to use numbers generally to instantiate or make real some abstract concept. And then what we'll do is we'll make decisions about it. In this case of memory, we can say, this person has good memory. This person has bad memory. Here's what we can do. We can design a therapy to help this person or to help that person. And so I had a student one time give me a whole recent book, like a, like a little um, magazine. And it said, Statistics of America. And she was so happy and smug to give me this whole book. And all it had were charts and pie, pie charts and graphs and tables of numbers. It's like, that's not statistics. We have statistics to make decisions. And you may not use the statistics I'm going to teach you in this course to make decisions directly in your experiments the rest of your life. Some of you will, but most of you won't. But you'll be the consumer of somebody's statistics. Somebody's going to try and fool you or sell you something. 
And I'm going to teach you in this class how to make decisions based on those numbers, whether that might be a good idea or a bad idea. And sometimes there's a section in my book I say, you can't make a decision with statistics. Be careful, because both sides build up ammunition. Oh, this is true. Look at the statistics. Oh, this is true. Sometimes you have to use your heart. But in general, we're a little bit safer if we're able to ground things in these decision-making processes that involve <coughs> statistics. So I like this guy, Abelson, who taught statistics at Yale for years and wrote a book on statistics. And he said, let's look at the three roles of a statistician. And one role of a statistician is to be a curious detective. And in psychology, that might mean, well, could vaccines cause autism? Does mercury, is a, a neurotoxin, should it not be in our teeth? Does this cause that? Oh, do cell phones cause brain cancer? These are important things to, to discover and to experiment with and to determine whether it's true or not. And we'll use statistics to do that, so we can make really well-informed decisions based on numbers. It's not numbers for numbers' sake. And no offense to mathematicians, but I think they're happier. And some mathematicians have revealed this to me privately and then said they'd have me killed if I revealed it. But it's true. They're happier when the numbers have nothing to do with the real world. So we're going to be curious to, as statisticians, our role, statisticians, role, is to be curious detective. And then we want to be an honest attorney. Now I know you, some of you say that's an oxymoron, but Everybody deserves representation. But what does an honest attorney do? do? They take this position and they argue as honestly as they can about it. And they will not lie. And if there's contrary evidence, as we'll see in uh, chapter one and chapter two, with amazing stories of graphs and tables, is we're gonna take this evidence and argue as fairly as we can, and if there's opposing evidence, we'll examine it. Because it may even make our uh, arguments stronger by examining alternative. And the third thing, which helps, I think, just in general in all life, is um, a good storyteller. One time I was reading in this uh, New Yorker magazine that has all kinds of interesting articles. I sometimes get so busy, all I do is look at the jokes. But I was reading one time, and, and it said, the story of steel making. And I thought, yeah, I don't know if I want to go there. <laughs> but the beginning was so interesting, how they make steel. And it's still a very dangerous procedure. Even though it's all automated, people get boiled to death and burned alive. It's just amazing. So I was reading it, and I was hooked. And it was a long story in The New Yorker. And I, and I was reading and reading and reading, and my wife came up and said, hey, what are you reading? And I said, a story about steel making. And she goes, God, you are a nerd. And I said, no, 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 it, it's really interesting. And she goes, I, I'll take a word for it. So she left. I kept reading. And then I came to the critical part, and it said, end of part one, next week, part two. And I went, ah! And my wife came in and said, what's wrong? And I said, that was the end of part one. Part two is next week. And said, but what was, the point was, is that it was such a great story. And do we reward storytellers in our lives now? I ask you, who's the richest woman in England? The queen? J.K. Rowling. What, what was her talent? A good storyteller. So, let's go back to statistics. If we can come up with, hey, I think this causes that. We argue honestly and look at contrasting evidence. And then we say, here's my hypothesis. 
it might be true. Here's other ways to test it that I didn't have time. And you make that an inherently interesting story to tell of why that's so important to the rest of us, then that's the role of the modern statistician. It's not numbers just for numbers sake.